Hello and welcome back to Educator.com and welcome back to Biochemistry. So today we're going to continue our discussion and talk about ATP and other high energy compounds. So let's just go ahead and jump right on in. Now we saw previously that an endergonic reaction can actually be coupled with an exergonic reaction to run the endergonic reaction um, under circumstances where it wouldn't otherwise go. So let's start with that. So we saw that the endergonic reaction, let's call it number one, so glucose plus inorganic phosphate goes to glucose 6-phosphate plus H2O. So the delta G for this one was a positive 13.8 kilojoules per mole. Okay, it, we saw that it could be coupled, coupled to the exergonic reaction. We'll call it reaction number two, which is the hydrolysis of the adenosine triphosphate. So ATP plus H2O goes to ADP plus inorganic phosphate. And the delta G for this particular reaction ended up being very, very large, negative. So minus 30.5 kilojoules per mole. Okay, we saw that they could be coupled to accomplish the result of the endergonic reaction. Endergonic reaction, but via a different pathway. But via a different pathway. So we saw glucose plus PI goes to G6P plus H2O, and over here we had the ATP. We had the H2O, and then of course we had the ADP and the PI. So similar species, they cancel, and what you get is a net reaction. We have GLC plus ATP going to G6P plus ADP. And the delta G for this, which is just the sum of the delta Gs of the previous reactions, we ended up with minus 16.7, and sorry about that, didn't give myself enough room, kilojoules per mole. So we saw that we could do that, uh, an endergonic reaction. So we achieved the same purpose. Our purpose was to take glucose and to convert it to glucose 6-phosphate. Well, that's the same thing here. We want that reaction to take place, but we just gave it a different pathway by coupling it with a reaction that has enough energy to give away to actually turn an endergonic reaction into an exergonic reaction. This is a very, very, very important theme, and this is exactly what adenosine triphosphate does. This is, well, it's almost all that it does. So let's go ahead and take a look at this um, uh, just a little bit more clearly. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a structural uh, representation of this. So let's go ahead and do a glucose molecule here. Uh, let's see. Well, you know what? Let me give myself a little bit more room. So I'll draw it down here. OH, CH2, we have the OH, and let me go ahead and draw my phosphate over here. So O, P, double bond O, O minus minus, OH, and let me go ahead and just fill in the rest of my glucose so that we don't forget. So the normal endergonic reaction wants to happen is, is that, and that, ultimately. Um, but hydroxide is not a very good leaving group, so this reaction is not very likely. So by providing an alternate pathway for this thing to take place, here's what happens. So let me redraw the glucose. So we have this, this, we have CH2. I'll put a little line there. 
And now we have O, P, O, P, O, P, O, and we have the ribose, and I'll just go ahead and put the adenine here. That's that, double bond, double bond, double bond. I know writing these things out can be a bit tedious, but that's, that's life. <laughs> okay, so let me finish this. Or I should say that's biochem. All right, so this that way, this goes that way. This is a very likely reaction. This is highly likely and highly thermodynamically favorable. And that's it. That's all that's going on here. So <clears throat> neither reaction one nor reaction two actually takes place. In other words, you know, we talk about using the energy from the hydrolysis of ATP to run an endergonic reaction. But ATP is not actually being hydrolyzed. In other words, water isn't coming and splitting ATP, releasing an inorganic phosphate, and then that inorganic phosphate is reacting with the glucose. That's not what's happening. So those reactions, they're separate, but when we couple them together um, via a different pathway, the same result is achieved. So when we talk about driving a reaction via ATP hydrolysis, the hydrolysis isn't actually taking place. And I think it's very, very unfortunate that you know, biochemistry still uses that kind of language. But as long as you remember that it's just a terminology, it's not actually taking place. The reaction is going via a different mechanism. This is what's happening. This is going to be direct phosphorylation of this glucose substrate via ATP. There is no free phosphate floating around that's going to react with the glucose. Okay. So now, this is a major theme, is the major theme, theme in metabolism, which we're going to be getting into very, very soon. Using the energy of incoming nutrient molecules, in other words, the food that we ingest, the carbohydrates, the proteins, and the fats, the using the energy of incoming nutrient molecules to create the ATP. ATP which will then drive otherwise endergonic reactions in the creation of the molecules the body needs. Molecules the body needs. That's it. That's all that's happening with metabolism. You take in um, food, uh, carbohydrates, uh, proteins, lipids. The breakdown of those foods, the catabolism, takes the energy from those foods. It uses that energy and it stores it in adenosine triphosphate. It creates, the body creates adenosine triphosphate molecules. Then it sends those adenosine triphosphate molecules out and now it can use that energy to drive these endergonic reactions, which are necessary to create, to create order in the body. It needs nucleic acids. It has to form proteins. It has to form carbohydrate polymers. It has to pump solutes across uh, membranes. It has to do all sorts of things. So we cr take the energy from the nutrient molecules, put it into ATP. ATP goes and does what it does, the anabolic process. You have the catabolic process, the breakdown, Conversion to ATP, ATP starts the anabolic process, building the molecules that it needs. So let's go ahead and actually draw this out. Okay, let me do this. I think I can do it on this page right here. So let me go ahead and draw one little arrow going down like this. <clears throat> and I'll say carbs, fats, proteins, and this is going to be catabolic, 
Actually, you know what? I'm not going to write that just yet. Okay, and our depleted products are going to be CO2, we're going to have H2O, NH3, and let's go ahead and draw a little circle like this. We have adenosine diphosphate plus inorganic phosphate, and we have adenosine triphosphate. Now let me go ahead and draw another arrow. This time I'll make it go up, ATP. Okay, now we have amino acids. <clears throat> we have the sugar monomers. Sugar monomers. Okay, we have our basic fatty acids. And we have nitrogenous bases. And we're going to form our proteins, our polysacs, we're going to form our lipids, we're going to form our nucleic acids, and then of course there's transport, there is mechanical work, osmotic work, whatever it is that we need that energy for. So we take in our nutrients, the catabolic pathways of the body break things down. They spit out the energy depleted products, the energy that they take from these carbs, fats, and proteins. They use it to take adenosine, dry, tri, adenosine diphosphate plus inorganic phosphate to create ATP. Now ATP can be used to drive the anabolic pathways. Anabolic means the creation to actually make the proteins, the polysacs, the lipids, the nucleic acids that the body needs in addition to all of the other energy needs. That's it. That's all that's going on. This is metabolism. Catabolism, anabolism, together they are your metabolism. That's all that's happening. So ATP as the primary energy intermediary in this whole process. That's it.